one, we got that out of the way. You was thinking about doing it. You're doing it now. So congratulations. You started your YouTube channel. The next step. <laughs> What's up everybody welcome to the channel it is officially 2021 and today we are talking about building a youtube channel in 2021 so this time of the year i get emails text messages from friends colleagues clients and they all want to know whether or not that resolution they made of starting a youtube channel in 2021 should they do that and i'm gonna tell you what i i tell them yes if you're thinking about doing something just do it that hesitation and apprehension is coming from not knowing what to expect on this new journey you are going to embark on. So the only way to know if something is right for you is to do it. That's gonna allow you to know if this is right for you or not. If you start a new job, a new relationship, moving to a new city, there's gonna be a certain familiarity of that hesitation you get from starting a new YouTube channel. When I first moved to Los Angeles, I'm from New York. There's no place like New York. I get it. But when you in Los Angeles in January and December with shorts on, you're like, you know what? I am a diehard New Yorker. But uh, yeah, I can get comfortable with this. I, I can do so, this. I can do one, we got that out of the way. You was thinking about doing it. You're doing it now. So congratulations. You started your YouTube channel. The next step. Two, what should I talk about? What should I do? That's the next question I always get. Listen, ultimately, understand start to look at youtube videos and start to see what registers to you there's one key to that don't think like if you want to vlog and you watch casey neistat he's one of my favorite vloggers i love what he does but that doesn't mean you need to jump on a one wheel and start vlogging one-handed on a hoverboard no you don't have to do that like you can use people as a starting base and then you figure out what you want to do you know so if you're doing a cooking show you can go google vlog cookers and find out which one you kind of relate to they have a little setup you might want to borrow some of the ideas if you was doing acting i'm gonna go check out will smith i'm gonna check out antoinette robertson i'm gonna go check out brie larson page and everybody i'm mentioning i'm gonna put in the description box below if i was doing tech i'll check out marcus brownlee i'll check out check out gerald undone i justine like and it's not to say that's the way it needs to be done but those are good starting points to be like all right i see what was done now I want to bring my vision and my creativity to this template and your platform. And a lot of times I hear people do these videos like how to be successful on YouTube. There's no one way to be successful on YouTube other than keep putting out content. Build it, they will come. Because the more and more you do content, the more and more YouTube has an understanding of what your audience will be like. They know who to share your videos to so they're not clicking on for two seconds. You might have the best cooking show on YouTube, you're sending your videos over to a gamer, they're gonna click off in seven seconds. Like this people with YouTube channels on ASMR, huge, cooking, huge, acting, huge, decorating, huge, DIY, huge, patio, huge, guns, huge, like so many different things. It, it doesn't have to be one way. So find a template, find someone that you can relate to. Like I like this channel, I wanna go in this direction and then make it your own. Number three, can you start YouTube with a cell phone, yes you can. One note about this, and this is for content creators, filmmakers, everybody, is that when I started out storytelling, my background is acting, and I got into creating content, filmmaking, and creating my own projects just because the first short film I ever produced was not the way it was supposed to look, and I'm a person, something go wrong, I need to understand what happened, so I became a self-taught you know, cinematographer 10 years ago, they didn't have 4K cameras. So my cell phone, the Samsung S20, is a lot better than what the T2i is right years ago with the camera I started off with. So right now I'm shooting on the R6, and I'm shooting because even though it looks like there's a lot of light, there's not, it's low light. A cell phone, I'll do a comparison. Cell phone footage, this is outside. This is what it looks like right now. Matter of fact, I'll turn the camera around. Hopefully I can stitch that in, um, compare it. You should see that there's an image difference between the cell phone. Is it doable if I was vlogging? Yes, you can get away with it. But I much so prefer this Canon R6 image. So if your budget allows for it, get an R6, get a little shotgun mic on it, and you'll be good. Shotgun mic, nice, decent camera. You don't have to get the R6. There's cheaper options out there. This is my go-to on the run, running gun camera, you know, my vlogging camera setup.
with that said yes you can do it with a cell phone i still think you should think about getting a nice little shotgun mic and a little rig to put your cell phone in just so you can get better audio but you can make it happen so use your creativity to cover up the holes that you have now or the things that you can't afford right now i recommend for plugins motion vfx most youtubers are using that now they have tons and tons of plugins it's like the go-to plugin website but there's ways around that so use your creativity if you have money there's certain things that money can help expedite and save you time so if you have the funds invest and one of the things i'm gonna say which is key that i didn't know in the beginning of the filmmaker is that if i was to break it down into a pie chart and we're not talking about vfx i'm talking about just creating projects <sighs> video and sound is 50 50. i came into the game thinking that it was all about video and a little bit about sound but i understand this and his reference you can see this in an old black and white film one of my favorite old black and white films is on the waterfront marlon brando phenomenal acting you can watch that movie yeah you might wish it was in color but you're not going to be distracted watching that movie you'd be like oh, i wish it was in color but if the sound was horrible you couldn't watch that movie so keep that in mind i don't care if you got 8k 4k 10k if the sound 12k if the sound is horrible you're not watching it but if it's 480p if it's 720p 1080p whatever resolution it is and the sound is good and you can understand it you can watch it you can't digest content that has horrible audio like you get feedback <laughs> you tune it out you don't want to hear that so just keep that in mind when you are having your budget set up to what you're going to invest in so down the line you can get a wireless live some of the options right now i'm gonna put a link in the description box below you get like the road go wireless system you can plug in on your camera you can actually plug it into your cell phone you have to get an adapter you know for the iphone and an adapter for the android with the receiver and still have the flexibility to get the sound coming from the camera from your cell phone so um i recommend for wireless live starting out the wireless go if you're a little bit more advanced sennheiser g4s if you're super advanced and electric sonics that's where all the pros all the pros use you know that's twenty five hundred dollars but um and then when it comes down to shotgun mic you can start off with like one of the small video mics road video mics or a saramonic video mic if you intermediate level you'll probably go get something like uh sennheiser mke 600 road ntg2 or three and if you're getting a little bit more professional with it then i recommend what i have which is the sennheiser mkh 416 i have the mkh 600e i use that for for a long time it sits on my canon c500 mark ii but for my studio and setup shots i'm using the sennheiser mkh 416 and if you want the super advanced then you already know it's going to be a sheps you know uh and with that said that covers your camera gear. We cover starting out. We cover finding your inspiration through looking at somebody who already had a channel so you don't have to create the wheel. You just got to reinvent the wheel. And ultimately, I think in conclusion, like I said, this is, I guess, the first part of telling you to start your YouTube channel. Uh, you can do it with a cell phone. I prefer my DSLR. I got shallow depth of field. I have light even when it's not a lot of light outside. I just showed you that. And you have the face tracking, eye tracking, all that. So if you are buying a DSLR, make sure it has those options so you don't have to worry about being in focus, especially if you like to shoot wide open like I do. I know that without looking at the camera, I'm going to be in focus. I know it's going to track very well. It has in-body image stabilization. So if I'm going handheld, all of those features, you're going to learn as time go on. And be patient. Just be patient with buying your gear. Remember, you marry the lens, you date the bodies, which basically means... Your lens value are going to last forever. Cameras, as a new camera come out, the other camera is going to be a lot, the previous camera is going to be a lot cheaper. So don't be afraid to look at the used market. I bought so many gear off of Craigslist and now Facebook Marketplace, which is a very helpful site. Get great deals. So like I got the R6, the Canon EOS R. You probably could get for like $1,300 now. When I bought the camera, it was like twenty, two grand or something like that. Still 4K. It has a crop at 4K, which is the reason why I've, I moved up to the R6. I don't want to crop at 4K, but YouTube goes through a lot of compression. And then 1080p out of the Canon EOS R is still phenomenal. So you can shoot 1080p full frame and get a great image and upscale it to 4K for YouTube or whatever. Or leave it at 1080p. Like people, I said before, as long as the audio is good, as long as the image is fine, people are going to be able to look at it and be like, all right, cool. I hear people talk about resolution. There's a reason why... 
when 1080p first came out they always had a 1080p tv against a 720p because you could see the difference but 4k and 1080p and true 1080p is hard to distinguish in person we're not talking about on youtube because 4k that's a little tip if you uploading a youtube video even if the video is 1080p upscale your footage to 4k so when it goes through compression at 1080p it'll look better than uploading a 1080p video hopefully that makes sense to you comment down below if you got questions about that but there was a reason why like show stores like best buy didn't necessarily put a 4k tv up to a 1080p because it's hard to distinguish because to really see the resolution of a 4k you have to have a massive screen like over 80 inches like most people don't know movie theaters only screens are like 2.5k like the number one camera in hollywood up until like a few years ago it was like a 3.5k camera the re alexa was like 3.5k before that it was like 2. Point, it was like 2k for years making all of these hundred thousand million dollar budget movies and red camera was like 4k since man that's what inspired me to get a camera like i couldn't afford a red k at the time uh i mean a red a red one at the time so i got that t2i but um i was like man i can't wait to get a 4k and now i got a 5.9k camera and at the end of the day, like for me, it's not even about resolution. It's about quality, dynamic range, and efficiency. Like I don't want file sizes where it doesn't make me fun to edit. So I'm not going to vlog on my C500 Mark II, even though it's my favorite camera, because it's not my favorite cam camera for vlogging. So just keep that in mind. So when you're watching even me, my channel, like I want to get all his gear. If it makes sense to you, get that. Not everything that works for me is going to work for you and vice versa. So build your channel, build it with confidence, do it repeat with the repetition and find out if this is something you want to do and in the meantime understand don't get caught up on the views don't get caught up on the subscribers like really the thing that i really get value from is that one person and be like yo that little piece of information that you drop is helpful and i think that's where it starts from you know what i mean there's so much things going on in the world right now if we could bring a little bit of peace and a little bit of comfort to somebody's life or educate or make someone you know have something to look forward to or purpose Yo, that's all I need. I don't know about you, but that's all I need. So, and I hope that's the case. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel. Turn on notifications if you want to see more content from this channel. And until next time, stay creative, be courageous, and get on your grind. Mm -hmm.